So the number one question we get, what apparel are we running this year? Stick around and find out. Hey guys, it's Dakota from Drake. Welcome back to another review. Uh, today I got something pretty special I wanna show you guys. So we get a lot of questions here at Drake, whether it's what packs we run in, what boots or, or what optics. But above all that, the number one question is, what apparel are we running? So if you guys have been following along with Drake for the past five years, um, you would know that we've dabbled in um, a bunch of different hunting apparel. Personally, myself, I've ran four to five different camel companies. Uh, Parker and Cole, they've ran First Light, Kuyu. Uh, we've had a couple of guys were sick. Uh, we have dabbled in all of it. So as of 2020, the crew and I have shifted gears, uh, and that brings us here. And today we are gonna cover Canis hunting apparel. So being a Western hunter, two things are very important to me. I need gear that's lightweight, and I need gear that can pack down. As many of you know, we hunt a lot out of our backpacks, so we always have camp on our back um, for extended periods of time. So after a good amount of research, that lands us here with Canis, and I wanna show you guys my 2020 apparel. Now, before I get into this, um, what I run, some of the other guys are running, um, and some of the other guys are running different things. So we kinda all have um, our own pieces, and I feel like what we all have kind of suits us and, and the way we hunt, uh, and I'll get in depth with that more. Uh, but let's start down here. So the way I kind of have this laid out, um, we're going from bottoms all the way up to our tops. Um, I put in that order because I kind of saved the best for last. So right out of the gate, the boys kind of gave me crap about this, but I don't care. Uh, I bought two of their Tar Merino briefs. So I've always kind of been the guy that just wears generic brands, uh, brief-wise, you know, American Eagle, Hanes, um, Under Armour, whatever it is, I've worn them. Um, and they've done the trick, but I've kind of wanted something a little bit more comfortable this year. So these are just a Merino wool blend. Um, everyone knows Merino wool is uh, antimicrobial, so it's going to help fight off that odor that you might get after a five to six day hunt. Um, and, they're, and they're lightweight, which is, I mean, I'll usually pack two pair uh, or three pair, and this should last me, I don't know, five to six days. Moving on down the line, these are going to be my pants. So these pants right here are called the Alpine Light Pant. Um, Canis offers them in a grape leaf and the alpha pattern. I have them in the alpha camel pattern. Um, I know it might sound cliche, but these are the best pants I've ever worn in my life. Now, I'm not saying that because that's what people wanna hear. I'm saying that because that's something I truly believe. Um, like I mentioned before, I have dabbled in a lot of pants um, and these have uh, been the superior out of all of them. So starting here at the top, they have a silicone band that runs all the way to about where the buttons are. Um, what's that, what that's gonna do, it's gonna hold up your shirt if you're the cut type of guy that kinda has it tucked in. Um, I do tuck my shirts in, uh, at least like my short sleeves, I'll tuck in. Uh, if I'm running something like a long sleeve base layer, I won't. Uh, but that helps keep your pants, or that helps keep the shirt tucked in. Around your whole waist, you're gonna have some heavy duty belt loops. I really love these, the last pair of pants I ran, um, they use the same fabric that the pants were made out of, um, and that created a weak point. Um, so I had like two to three belt loops on my last pants break because of that. But these feel like, um, if you guys are familiar with like a marsupial belt or like a heavy tactical belt, it almost feels like that material. So right here in the center, nothing special. You guys are just gonna get one button and then uh, a half zip. So right here on the back, you're gonna have two uh, zippered pockets. So I'm a big fan of zippered pockets. Uh, I've ran pants that have like Velcro pockets. Um, and they've never really held up um, cameras or SD cards or, or phones. They seem to slip out. They ain't slipping out when you got a zipper. So on the front of the pant, you're gonna have two zippered front pockets. Um, now that's unique. I've never had a pant that has zippered front pockets. Uh, the reason I like that so much is because usually that's where the more, the more valuable things go, like my phone, um, knife, anything. Um, they're not lined with like fleece, a couple high chew wrappers. <laughs> they're not lined with uh, fleece or nothing, nothing fancy in the inside, um, but you got two of them, which is really nice. Moving on down the pant, you're gonna have two zippers right here. Those are both pockets. The top one is 
like kind of like a right side thigh pocket and then the bottom one is going to be more of like the left side of your thigh pocket. Um, on the inside of the bottom one, you're going to have, uh, it's, it's technically two pockets. So you got a main pocket and then you have a little tiny pocket right here on the inside. Now that's going to be perfect for reeds, SD cards, something along those lines. All right, moving on down towards the knees. So the difference between the Alpine light pant and the Alpine uh, pant is going to be the Kevlar on the knees. So the Alpine pant has a little bit more reinforcement on the knees, um, but these do as well. Um, there's a little bit extra more padding, and the reason I like that is because we've all knelt down on that rock, that one tiny little rock that'll make a grown man cry. So I like having that extra padding. These come with knee pads, um, but I have never been the type to, uh, to run knee pads. I know some guys love running the knee pads, um, but it's just not for me. I, I hate the feeling of, uh, of the looseness of, of knee pads, if that makes sense. When I'm walking, it feels like I can just sit, I can feel them just bouncing up and down. But I haven't actually worn these pants like out in the woods with the knee pads on. The first thing I did when I got the pants was take the knee pads out. So if you are one of those guys that have these pants and run them with the knee pads, let me know how they are. All right, moving on down the pant. Um, this is where you kind of get to the bee's knees of the pant. Um, what really makes this pant stand out. So you're going to have two, um, I don't know, maybe foot, foot long zippers. So I run a 12 inch tall Crispy Hunter boot and um, when I zip these all the way up it is, it sits just above, um, just above where my boot ends. So I do get a little bit more ventilation um, when I run these down, um, but half the time I am wearing gaiters, so there would be no need for that. But since I mentioned gaiters, that brings me to my next point. So what makes this pant unique, um, and I haven't seen it on probably any other pant besides these, um, is Canis offers a boot lace hook. So guys who run gaiters, you know how how convenient that is. If I'm not running gaiters, I will use this 90% um, of the time I am. Um, but for people who are kind of confused, um, what this does is it doesn't allow the pant to, to come up whenever you're taking long strides or you're going uphill. Um, it's going to stay right on your boot. Another thing, if you guys look closely, is that there's an extra, I don't know, probably two, three inches at the bottom of the pant. Now, on the inside, there's a draw cord. You can pull that tight if you're running like a low laced boot, something like um, like the Crispy Ativa, something very short. Um, it, would even, it would even be good if you were running just like a six inch tall boot or an eight inch tall boot, something that'll grasp that boot. If you don't want to run those, you can flip them inside, bring that pant two inches higher. Maybe if you like your pants a little shorter, I personally like mine uh, on the longer side, um, so I usually run them down. So as far as what the pant is made out of, uh, it's made out of Cordura's four-way stretch fabric um, with a water repellent. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with four-way stretch fabric, just think of something like, um, like spandex. Um, you can stretch it crosswise or lengthwise, um, hence the name four-way stretch. So like I mentioned before about how we like to keep it light, uh, this pant comes in at about 15.4 ounces uh, and that's for a medium. These are a small, so it's going to come in slightly lighter. Now that is a couple ounces lighter than the last pants I wore um, and substantially lighter um, than the pants before those ones. So the last little thing before I jump on over to my base layers and my jackets um, is all the zippers on the pants are made out of YKK zippers. Uh, YKK zippers are just known for their durability um, and this pant has, heck, six of them. So 90% of the time I'm going to have something like this on. This is the Tar Merino half sleeve. Uh, it comes also in the grape leaf and the alpha pattern. Uh, as you can see right here, I have the alpha pattern. So as far as fabric goes, the whole shirt is going to be made out of Cordura's Merino blend. Um, so it's going to have that Merino feel. Um, I know some dudes complain that Merino wool is itchy. Um, I know Brandon always complains that Merino wool is itchy on his skin. It's not for me. I love it. Um, my favorite part about Merino wool is how cool it keeps you. Uh, and then right here on the shoulders, it's going to have that same four-way stretch fabric that the uh, Alpine pant is made out of. I'll probably only wear the half sleeve when it's extremely hot. Um, I usually don't wear this underneath another base layer unless I start to get cold. Um, but for those early season August hunts, um, early September when it can be 80s, 90s, that is going to be my bread and butter.
Nothing extremely fancy, uh, but being a guy who's never actually had a half sleeve, uh, especially in camo, um, it's something I'm looking forward to putting to the test this year. So speaking of base layers, I have two. Um, this one though, this is my baby, uh, my go-to, whatever you want to call it. This is the base layer that I'm going to be wearing about 100% of the time. So coming in at about 9.4 ounces, this is called the Chamois Half Zip. Um, now it comes with a hood, um, but Canis also offers it without a hood. So Canis does offer it in the grape leaf green um, and as well as the uh, alpha pattern. Uh, I got mine in the grape leaf green because I, like, I wanted to switch it up. Um, plus I'm a huge fan of solid colors. Let's dive on into the fabrics. So the entire base layer is made out of Cordura's European Nylon Merino Grid Fleece. So one of the main reasons why I did buy this base layer um, out of their wide variety of base layers that they have is because of the grid fleece. I know a lot of people who run that grid fleece and they swear by it and for those who don't know much about grid fleece I'll show you. So like I mentioned earlier it has that half zip. So right here on the inside you guys are going to get this, uh, this pattern. Now it just looks like a bunch of tiny little squares. That is that grid fleece pattern. You are going to get one pocket on here. I wish it did have hand warmer pockets. Um, that would be the only thing that I wish it had. Uh, I'm not a fan of having chest pockets. I don't find them valuable. And especially guys like me who wear a bino harness and a pack. When I have my bino harness on and my pack on, that pocket that should be here is not accessible. You will notice that the shoulders and where that chest pocket is, that's going to be a lighter green. The reason it's a lighter green is because that's the Cordura four-way stretch fabric. Now I've worn this base layer um, when it was 80 degrees out. I was a little on the warm side. Um, I think I did have to roll the sleeves up um, and this was buried in my pack and I was too lazy to get it out. Um, but then when nighttime fell it got around 50 degrees um, and that paired with the jacket that I will cover next was perfect. So now we're moving on to the fun stuff. So every hunter has that jacket, right? The one they go to to glass with, the one they go to when it's cold, when it's windy, when it's rainy, um, kind of that all around jacket that's not a puffy jacket. Um, this, is, this is my go-to. So I've thrown that word go-to around on a couple of these garments. The Alpine pant, the Chamois uh, half zip, and this, the Altai jacket, is going to be the setup I'm running pretty much all year round until late September um, when the temperatures start to drop. So if we're actively walking or, or climbing, um, I can get away in low temperatures with just the Altai jacket and, and the Chamois half zip. So right off the bat, you guys are going to notice kind of two shades of green. You got that lighter green up top around the arms, uh, the collar, shoulders, and then the belly. Um, that's going to be the same four-way stretch fabric um, that the last three garments have had. So that darker green is going to be that three-layer stormproof fabric. So that's where you're going to get your uh, rainproof, your windproof, all that. On the inside of the jacket, and this is a full-length zipper, you guys are going to get a polyester fleece uh, on, the, on the whole inside of the jacket. Now, when I first got the jacket, I wasn't too sure if it was going to keep me warm, just, just having like a fleece lining. Um, but I'll tell you what and it all comes back to layering. You layer it with something like the Chamois or the Tar, you will stay extremely warm in this jacket. Again, I'm not a huge fan of uh, chest and arm pockets, uh, but some guys are. And I've used them before, um, and if I do put anything right up here in the uh, arm pockets, and it's got two of them, uh, it's gonna be something like an SD card or it's gonna be something like uh, my amp reads. Moving on towards the bottom, you're gonna get two hand warmer pockets. Um, nothing special as far as fleece lining goes, um, but they do have zippers, so again, guys who want to put their phones or valuables in there, you can zip it up and you can keep it secure. So one of the coolest features that Canis offers, um, and I will get more in depth on this, um, is on their cuffs of some of their garments. Now, if you guys have ever layered um, and you go jackets on top of jackets, you'll notice that it's usually Velcro. You throw on another jacket, Velcro. So you're gonna have a bunch of Velcro, you're gonna have, your, your wrists are gonna be double the size, it's hard to get your watch through, it's hard to get your release through. So what Canis does is they have a ceramic coated cuff. Um, so what that's gonna do, it's gonna contour to your wrist, so it's gonna kinda just taper down um, so that you can pair this with another jacket. All right, and saving the best for last, uh, this is gonna be what most guys would call puffy jacket. Um, personally, I've never owned a puffy jacket, so it's cool to kind of add that to my arsenal for this year. 
This is gonna be the Premier insulation jacket. Uh, Canis offers two versions of their insulation jackets. This kind of being the, the lighter version um, and their Alps hooded downs there kind of their granddaddy of insulation jackets. So when we do these backcountry trips, um, we do keep a good eye on the weather. Um, if weather's calling for rain or if weather's calling for, for low temps, I will pack this. If it's not, um, I'll probably leave this behind and I'll have the Altai jacket take its place. But for those trips that are calling for cold weather, um, it's nice to have something this small. I mean, here's a, here's a Coke can for size reference, but it's nice having something this small being able to fit down um, in my pack and still have enough room to, to store more gear in there. But enough of that, let's dive into some of the features. So what you'll notice is it comes in this waterproof sack. Um, it's 100% waterproof, so you're not gonna have to worry about rainstorms or nothing. Um, and also, if you go down to like a creek, you can use this and fill it up with water and it's gonna hold that water. So if you wanted to cook or drinking water that you need to filter, um, that's something you can use personally. I probably wouldn't use that because most likely I'll end up putting this back in the bag and I don't want my uh, puffy jacket wet. So the jacket comes in a grape leaf and it comes in uh, the alpha pattern. Uh, I got mine in an alpha pattern. So while I have the jacket upright, I'll kind of dive on into the fabric. So it's kind of hard to see on the alpha pattern. Uh, if I had a grape leaf one, it'd be easier, but right here on the shoulders and the chest, that's going to be that same four-way stretch fabric uh, that almost all these garments have. And then the rest of the jacket is just gonna be a double ripstop fabric with a water repellent finish. So before I put the jacket on the table and get some different camera angles of some of the features that this jacket does have, uh, I do wanna show you one thing. So right here at the top, you're gonna see this patch of fleece lining. Uh, that fleece lining is gonna sit right on the back of your neck. And then when you got this jacket completely zipped up, the sides right here are gonna lay right here on your cheeks. So it's gonna be nice and warm. So I'll lay this jacket down and kind of dive on into more of the features that it has. So we'll start on the inside of the jacket. Um, it doesn't have as much features as the outside, but we'll get into it. So the whole jacket and even the hood is gonna be made out of a Shield Apex insulation. Now I'm not 100% sure what that means, um, but it's probably just a big fancy word for really hot. So right here on the side, you guys are gonna have one chest pocket. Um, now I know I talk about how I don't like to put things in chest pockets, but uh, with the case of this jacket is I usually wear this when I'm glassing. So this is gonna sit over my bino harness so I can put things there. So with normal puffy jackets, the hood um, is more of just a shell, and then the rest of the jacket is that, is that thick insulation. Uh, it's not the case with this jacket. Uh, even the hood has the same insulation as the, as the rest of the jacket. So the hood's pretty cool too. It's got this brim right here at the top. I don't know, probably eight inches across. Um, that's gonna act like another bill of a hat. So if it is raining, the water's just gonna run right off the top. Right here on the back, you're gonna have a cinch down, and then also right here, um, where you would pull this tight to have that scrunch feel to it. And then moving on towards the bottom, it's kind of got this elastic waistband, um, and it also has that silicone grid pattern that the, that the Alpine pant has. Uh, what that's gonna do is it's just gonna grip to your pants or it's gonna grip to your belt buckle, um, so it doesn't allow that jacket to ride up high. So lastly, we'll flip to the outside. Uh, it's gonna have four pockets on the front, two of them being on that four-way stretch fabric right here on the chest. Um, and then two right down here on the hand warmer pockets. All four of these zippers are gonna be an AquaGuard YKK zipper. So that's just gonna mean there's no water, there's no rain, there's no dirt getting in them. The two that ride right here on your chest, nothing extremely fancy, it's just a pocket, uh, but they are pretty deep. I can fit probably my whole hand and a couple inches of my wrist inside of them. And then down here on the hand warmer pockets, um, those are also deep. And on one side, they have a fleece lining, so nice to keep your hands warm. And then right here in the center, you have a full length AquaGuard zipper, and this rides super high, like I said before. So when I have this thing up, this thing usually sits right at about my lip, um, and that's the case for that fleece lining, how I said it fits right here on your cheeks. Uh, and I really like that feature because, like I said earlier, when I, when I glass, I usually have this thing bundled up high, mostly because of mosquitoes, but another reason to keep me warm. And then we'll finish it off with the ceramic coated jersey cuffs that the Altai jacket has. And I'm gonna do a quick demo to kind of show you guys how well these two jackets pair together. So I won't put the jacket completely on because my mic will get muffled, but you'll see when I put this on, the ceramic coated cuffs sit tight right there on my wrist. And then when I throw the Premier on, and with that inside of that jacket being that silky feel, it's gonna, it's gonna be good for layering because it just slides right in, but especially on this jacket, as soon as I pull that tight, it's gonna stretch over my wrist, 
and then it's gonna pop down and this suit and this sits super tight so most jackets you would have to roll your cuff up just to get like a watch or a release on um, I have two jackets on right now and that still sits pretty tight I can get a I can get a watch and a release over that so I mentioned earlier in the video that the crew and I run um, some of the same garments and some of us run different garments um, I run these things specifically because one I like to stay warm I like to stay dry and I like to keep it lightweight and I handpicked all of these and it matches it matches my style of hunting perfectly so to kind of give you guys an idea um, of what I'm talking about to make more sense uh, here's the perfect example so our good buddy Kyle um, he always runs super hot um, it could be 50 degrees 40 degrees he's in a t-shirt um, meanwhile I'm over here four layers in freezing my butt off so when Kyle sat down and handpicked his garments he knew that he didn't need uh, the Premier insulation jacket. He didn't need something that warm because he's always hot. He didn't need something like the Altai jacket because he's more of a base layer guy. So what he went with was the Altai vest, something that if his core gets cold, he can pair it with the chamois. And he also has the chamois. And then obviously none of us like getting wet, so Kyle went out and bought the Wapiti rain jacket that Canis offers. So it's, it's kind of cool that as a crew, we can all run different garments um, that fit our needs. Anyways guys, that's a wrap on today's review. I hope I answered some of your guys' questions and gave uh, a good rundown of the gear that I'm running. Um, I know it was a burning question that we got a lot, so uh, it was just inevitable for me to get a review out. So I hope that answered some of your guys' questions. Uh, if you guys have more questions, like always, leave them in the comment section and, and I'll try to address them as I can. All of the gear you see here on the table, I will leave a link in the description so you guys can check those out. Um, and then I'll also leave a link to the website so if you guys are curious on other products that Canis offers uh, you can go ahead and check them out. Like always if you guys enjoy this review and you enjoy the content that we put out on this channel hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We are on our journey to 1500 subscribers. If you guys want to see our most recent review I will leave that right here and if you guys want to hit that subscribe button even quicker I will leave that right here and like always thank you for joining us on another opening morning review.